Hello class, and today we will be going into an optional area called the Painted World of Ariamas. Now this episode is completely skippable, so don't complain about the length, and because the area is completely, totally optional. So basically what we're going to... I actually sped up large portions of this video as well, even though it didn't really necessarily have to be sped up, because the video was originally like 49 minutes long. So I had to tone it down a bit. So as you can see, we're left with around 37, which is pretty good. So, yeah, enjoy sped up goodness of an Orlando. Anywho, we're gonna run in here and kill all the painting guardians. Now, you might have mentioned, you might have heard me mention the name, the Painted World. So, as you're probably guessing, the, uh, the area is actually the painting. In case you're wondering what that item was, it was the Painting Guardian Sword. So, now we have that. The Painting Guardian set is actually found inside the Painted World. So, there. So there it is. It's it's not terribly good, and it's completely dex-oriented. The only thing it has going for it is its moveset. As you can see, the Painting Guardians can backstab, as with many other humanoid enemies that are dex-focused. So be careful of that. Oh, well, they never do make a move to parry you. Anyway, so this is the most interesting painting ever. A lot of people call this level the best level or area in the game. Not entirely sure why, but it is. So it, it's, it's got plenty of secrets, the enemies are interesting. Basically, the only thing it has really going for it is the uniqueness of it. So other than that, well, it's just another area. So that's just, this part's pretty cool. And it really scares you right when it happens. So, yeah, it sucked right into it. And luckily we happen to touch the part that's right on the bridge. So guess where we come out? Right on the bridge. <laughs> So, you're probably wondering if we can get back out. You can't. There is no way to get back out of this uh, this place except for beating the boss. Or walking past the boss, but we'll get into more of that later. So, for now, just walk up here and there's a bonfire. I'm not entirely sure what happens if you don't rest here, but I don't think there's a way back. You probably just spawn at the end of the bridge. So anyway... There's the only bonfire in the painted world. We're gonna go ahead and do a few things here. We're actually going to store all our useless items and armor. And also repair our armor a bit as well. And so there we can repair a bit. And there we go. I just have a few more things to do. Just to make sure we don't have anything in excess. Let's go ahead and put a bow and a few arrows on. That's pretty much it. So here we are. It's kind of underwhelming. Underwhelming. But it's there. So, a most effective tactic is judging the length of the way hander. If you can just barely tap the front of the enemies with your heavy attack, you're pretty much set. So this is the only reason I really equip bows. As you can see, the shoulder plate's mostly blocking the way, but when you pull it back, you get a clear view. If you didn't do that, you'd have to wait until much later and explore a bit if you wanted to get this item. But it's only a humanity, so it's not really that important. Anyway. So, the glory of this place is exploring every nook and cranny. Because it's basically the side quest room. So, there's plenty of optional places to go and areas to go. I show you all the most important ones, and the only thing I missed was one of the armor sets, which I didn't even think was that important anyway. So you might see those guys with really big heads. They actually release a poison mist when you kill them, which is actually toxic. So you have to get far away from them in order to get rid of, in order to not get toxified. But as you can see, it's draining us, it's draining our health very, very, very slowly. So we're just going to ignore it like we know the poison in Blight Town. So up here is, uh, I think, just a soul item, but it gives me a chance to show you this enemy called the Harpies, which I believe are diehard servants of the Crow Sin person Velka. So probably also the person that freed us from the prison. If you guys want to know more about lore, you can go there. You can go to lore sites and stuff. You can see all the harpies perched up there. They're like 
man crow hybrids, except they're actually women crow hybrids, I think. But even they can't stand up to the double tap, or in this case the triple tap, because we don't quite have enough damage with our sway hand. So we get it upgraded enough, we definitely will though. No worry about that. They do have another really annoying grab attack. But fortunately I never actually die in this video except one time when I'm exploring and fall off a ladder somehow. So these guys have a triple tap triple tap tactic. We actually have enough endurance to pull that off properly. So if you're just fighting one, just slam her three times. It usually works. So they have a chance to drop souvenirs of reprisal, which as I said earlier is the leveling up item for the Blades of the Dark Moon Covenant, which I can show you once we finish up with the catacombs. So the area we'll be doing after this is actually finishing up a couple of the optional areas, like mostly the Undead Asylum, to get the Crest of Artorias, and the and going back down to Ash Lake just to kill that Hydra and show you guys the Covenant. So we'll be doing that. And there's another Hydra down in the Darkroot Basin, which is the area we'll be actually focusing on the next video. So you see that item over there, you cannot make that jump, no matter how hard you try. There is another way down there, but I don't think I ever got there in this video. So you can feel free to explore a bit, but I'm just going to tell you right out, it's an online play item that just lets the same person invade you over and over again. So I'm not even going to bother because it's, I just don't really find it useful. There's other online play items in this area that are much better and have more of a use. So yeah, you can go ahead and run back up here. There are a few interesting fights in this area, but they're mostly just copy-paste of other fights. Although there is a neat little bit of humor with the backside of an undead dragon on the end of a bridge. So, anyway... So we're going to be able to shoot down another item here. It's uh, right over there, as you can just barely see get it just right. It's right down there. Okay, close enough. So there we go. Oh, that guy's been hitting us enough. It's barely a poke with our Havel set, but, well, it's can get pretty annoying. Let's go ahead and get rid of him. And then lure the rest of them into our little hallway of terror. So these, so these blow to toxin guys are a unique enemy to the painted world. So you'll never see these guys again, ever, at all, after this area. So you don't need to worry about being annoyed by toxin death enemies later in the game. Although you will get mobbed by skeletons in the catacombs and swarmed by tough crystal golems in the duke's archives and and then uh, mobbed by almost untouchable ghosts in New Londo. And then, uh, yeah, the last few areas of the game do have this way of tormenting you. So, anyway, as you can see, we're barely doing anything to that guy, even though our health, our health bar is obscuring his. <laughs> um, yeah, there are ways to get everywhere in this game. In, in this level, and game actually, but they're not always obvious at first. So you're gonna have to explore a bit, especially later in the area if you want to find these. So, neat little trivia: we slot our blade into the little crook cause in our helmet because we're just that awesome. Anyway, let's go back up here and through this door instead of up the stairs. There's a item over here, guarded by one of those guys that's hanging over the walls. These guys like to show up in this area. Anyway, don't bother with this big area in here just yet. We'll actually be going to fight this undead dragon down here. So first, we should be totally ready for this fight. There's uh, the camera zooms in uncomfortably close, as we, and you can see the undead dragon just over there. Uh, the a uh, little bit of his leg falls off apparently that the, the or something the only thing connecting is front and front and back 
So now most of it's coming after us. So I sped up this video because I had to speed up everything. Basically, I tripped this guy to stay out, range of his, stay out of the range of his poison attacks and hit his arms and legs without getting crushed by and without getting crushed by his uh, mouth or uh, arms and legs when they do decide to melee attack him. So it's a pretty simple game of get to the target and hit it. So dragons, even undead ones, are actually particularly weak to lightning weapons. So lightning is the most effective method to use against these kinds of enemies. So that's done, and we get a neat little reward down this way. A dragon scale. So these are actually pretty rare items, only dropped by the drakes as a respawning form, although they are guaranteed drops of hydras and undead dragons and stuff, but those are one use enemies. Anyway, this is the undead dragon's backside. It's completely unself-aware when you jump attack it. It has to be a jump attack. It uh, goes up, giving you a shortcut directly to the final boss of this area or the way out if you choose to skip said final boss. But there's so much more that this area has to offer, and we're only about a third in, so let's get moving. Yeah, and uh, down this way, and down this way, and uh, we're coming out into a mostly bare corridor. As you can see, this the way only leads down. We'll be going more into that little doorway with the stairs going up later. There's the white fog gate, which doesn't lead to the boss, and this is that is the door leading to the final boss little corridor thing that we get accessed above with the undead dragon. So a neat little trick is to go through this door. And uh, here we are in a neat little area. Those guys are called the Phalanax. They're easily skippable because they're very slow and a little bit and they don't have that much damage so we're gonna run past them this is probably one of the most effective soul granting spots in the game these guys those phalanax guys give you a lot of souls for just one heavy attack each and, and you can actually get multiples of them in one group so it's actually very very simple just to get them all in a group and kill them repeatedly, especially because they're so close to this bonfire. So, yeah, I'm actually going to do a quick little video of me um, fighting these guys. So as you can see, we only got 2,000 souls from that, and I'm just going to go ahead and take one more. Just to uh, give us a level, and so we don't have too many souls stacking up in our inventory. So yeah, so now we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and consume this as well, but that's only 5,000 souls and we're definitely not going to be able to get enough. Anyway, this guy and these guys are, only, are the only two enemies you actually have to fight getting to the later area of the painted world now. And I don't think there's any more of the poison hat guys, except in the annex area, which I'll show you guys later. These guys are ridiculously fun to fight, especially if you have an area of effect attack. They give you way too many souls. As you can see, um, if you hit their shields, you actually get they, you actually, they actually take less damage. As you can see, I'm just basic heavy attacking them. As you can see, they all have spears, which do slight damage, but really not much. So, yeah, the trick is to just get them on the side and whack them once a pretty sound strategy and as you can see we've already racked up like almost more than 10,000 souls just here alone so that's like a 10,000 soul run every time with just those guys to fight and those two guys in the front to worry about three guys so yeah it's a really profitable soul run there's another ring of sacrifice there not sure why that's that that's there but it's there so this this place is really just a random conglomeration of stuff. It can be explained that it's a prison of the gods or something, which is a pretty fair explanation because the main boss of this area was probably locked up here by Gwyn himself for being a product of Seat the Scaleless and his daughter or something, but then again, this is all speculation and I don't actually know any of this for sure. So. 
These guys can still stagger you, even though you have almost infinite poise for some reason. So there actually is also an NPC invasion, because why not? So we'll have to trigger it. But he has the best headpiece in the entire game, I think. Although not necessarily for armor. It does it does certainly fit the spot for looks. It looks incredible. So I'll have to wait for, for him to invade to show you guys, but anyway. So there he is, King Jeremiah. He uses a bleed effect whip. And there he is. So as you can see, his headpiece is rather tall and awesome looking. So but even he can't set up to the awesomeness of the double tap. Not even three attacks are worth this guy. <laughs> anyway. So we can't get up there normally. So we're just gonna have to go around. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I was actually rather annoyed that I couldn't just walk. Just and I couldn't just climb up there, but well, that would make it a parkour game, wouldn't it? And Dark Souls is definitely not a parkour game. Anywho, so go ahead and grab his humanity and his notched whip, which is another, again, a dex-based weapon, but it does has, but it has a bleed effect as opposed to the actual whip. So it's not very good against armor and natural armor, but uh, it does, it's very good against plain skin, even better than the actual whip. That's acid surge. I believe it's kind of like a flamethrower that deals acid, that deals poison damage. That's pretty nice. Anyway, now that we're uh, now that we're done here, it's time to go into the labyrinth area, where there's wheel skeletons. I haven't actually had to fight these guys yet, but I guess this will be a good first taste of them, especially to show what they can do. So we're climbing down into the well areas, and here we are in tight enclosed corridors with wheel skeletons. These guys batter away like nothing else. They keep rolling until they hit something or run out of range. They take so much damage to kill. And they just always just keep rolling. That's their only form of attack, surprisingly enough. So you can get their shield, actually. They're, you can get the wheel thing as a as a weapon or shield. It's actually a shield. But um, the only really thing it has against other shields is its ability to do a spin attack. It's probably wondering where do we go with from now. As you probably guess, those all the colored balls are, in fact, illusionary. Or illusory, or however you pronounce that. Anyway, more wheel skeletons. Somehow we staggered him starting up. This one heavy attack will suffice for these guys. And up here is a neat little secret area that contains the actual flamethrower spell, along with one more of these guys, which I was stupid enough to get toxic by. He contains the fire surge pyromancy, which is a flamethrower, pretty much. And it's limited by its dur it's it's basically like a it has like around 80 ammo, but it eats it up like nothing else. And it is a pyromancy, so you actually could use it or acid surge if you wanted to, because we have enough attunement. So it's all up to you guys if you actually want to use those. I actually think it would be pretty pretty effective. Anyway, it's always a good idea to check for wheel skeletons, as you can see there's one here. You can see he just spams away your shield. If we didn't have one with high durability, we would be screwed. Because he would have knocked it down and battered us to death a while ago. Down here is the Annex Key, which leads us to the Annex Secret Area, containing a few worthwhile items like the Dark Ember, which allows for a cult ascension. Anyway, down here. Break open this one, and you're immediately attacked by a wheel skeleton. And then another wheel skeleton. Oh, these guys are a little relentless. This next room actually has four. Four at once. If you don't block these guys and roll out of the way, they will molest you. <laughs> like, literally. Anyway. So, we're gonna go ahead and go up this way. Let's just see what there is. There's not really much, except, well, the place we've already been, because there's a dead wheel skeleton. Huh. Anyway. Down here is a pretty neat soul item, and the 
way to open the gate to the final boss tower thing. Neat little cutscene. This statue kind of sinks down and it rotates a bit. So this is apparently the statue of Gwyn's wife and Solaire as a baby, or Gwyn's firstborn, or whoever it is. Anyway, the door over there opens, unfurling the corridor. So we can go down there should we want to, but well, not quite yet, because we have a few more things to explore. That wheel skeleton immediately attacked me after the cutscene, which shows just how annoying random encounters can be. <laughs> anyway. So as you can see, even walking into the back of them hits their, hit, makes us hit their spikes. As you can see they drop your health like nothing else, even though it looks like they don't do much damage, they do a lot. So always keep your shield up when you're fighting wheel skeletons, because there's actually five. Huh. Anyway, down here, kill... actually there's six! Huh. There's way too many wheel skeletons. Anyway, here's the bone meal shield. So... As you can see, it requires 30 strength, and it's overall worse than the eel shield in every respect at all. But it does have a little turn attack, which basically just spams right in front of you as opposed to actually rolling forward. So, anyway, here's another item here. Most of the secret items are mostly just soul items. Nothing really else important to reward you with, I guess. But anyway down this way, and up these stairs, and we're heading back up to the main area of the Painted World. However, this is an area we haven't actually been in yet, so I'm going to do a little exploring before I expect me falling off a ladder, and uh, yeah. So down that way is some stuff, but down this way is the wrong way first, so we're going to go down here first crows. There's a lot of crows here. I wonder why. Hmm. Anyway, there's an archer up there. Probably the same one that we killed in, in an earlier uh, run. See, so we're running low on health. You guys do so little damage that you can actually just go ahead and drink essence in front of them and you'll gain more health than you lose. So here's the place where you could chop down that humanity from the beginning if you didn't have arrows or anything like that. So, yeah, run back this way. And, uh, go through here. Now, if you remember the rafters from the first bit of the video... Actually, never mind. We're right back where we started in the, in a, in the courtyard area. So let's head back here and get over a toxin and restock, restock our Estus a bit, along with uh, consuming a few souls. So you can sneak around up behind us. No. I sped up this bit because we have so many soul items. So, yeah, we have four souls of the proud knight, souls of proud knights. So, and there we go. So now we have enough souls for multiple levels. We're now at level 63 with 33 vitality, 33 endurance. Hmm. Well, it's going to be a long time before you can mid-roll on this set, so yeah. Anyway. So, make sure you get rid of these guys, you don't want them following you. And now for this next bit, we are going to head into the Annex, which is the area we got the key for a little earlier. So, down here and through here. This badge is going to get a little annoying. And up past this little altarish area. And here is the Annex. I don't think you can open that with the Master Key, but I won't actually know in this review. So it's up for you guys to figure out if you want to. But you're probably going to end up gra grabbing the Master Key anyway if you want to go the normal route through this area. So we're going to head up this way first. And up here is one of those fire-breathing ones. As you can see, I actually attempt to judge my distance properly. There's actually one behind us and one in front of us. Which is draining our health like ridiculous. Anyway, there's a few crow people up here, so we're not going to wor worry ourselves about that guy. Huh. We'd complain about nudity a bit if these guys weren't half-crow. Now that one was stupid and jumped right into the death pit. 
can see we can't get to that one without exploring a bit, so we're just going to go ahead and ignore it. Now you can trick those crows into jumping into the death pit, or you can fall on yourself and die horribly if you want to, but it's all up to you. So, yeah, more crows. There's actually three of them. So yeah, just a few good whacks. And there. That's one down, and actually two down, and one to go. So there, that was pretty simple. So here's a neat little miracle that uh, stops people from casting spells in its vicinity or something like that, I don't, I don't know for sure. If you go down those stairs to the right there, that uh, in, the, in the upper area, we, I think you'd actually get a little neat little armor set called uh, Velka's... No, we'll, we'll actually get that later. So, Actually, no, we won't. I think you'll get a neat little armor set that's lightish medium armor. So it, it's not really important because there's actually lighter and more medium armor sets in this. So yeah. You who? Judge your distance is bright and you won't ever get toxin by these guys. Except I did, so der. Anyway, kill this guy. And here's another one of the petrified blacksmiths or something. He drops the dark ember which allows you to ascend things to a cult from divine. It basically is the higher scaling, less base damage version of the divine scaling that does not permakill skeletons and I think does more damage against the giant type or god type enemies like Gwyn or Gwendolyn. So we already have an occult weapon, the occult club, but it's not terribly good. So yeah, there's definitely some relation to Velka in here, perhaps people who sinned are trapped in here or something. But anyway, this is his rapier, or her rapier or something. So, yeah, let's go ahead and drop down because we have nowhere else to go, and I completely forgot about that area over there with the stairs while filming this review. And, uh, there's nowhere really to go, although I make a vain attempt to explore rafters for a while. There's nothing that comes of it. So I just end up dropping down anyway. And I probably could have done, done a plunging attack there and killed this rat prematurely, but, oh well. I might notice that these rats are all bino. Not sure why. Maybe they just got rolled in the snow for a while. Anyway. Over this way. More rats. I think this is like the sewers of the painted world. There's plenty of albino rats. Anyway. Maybe it's, or maybe it's just the sewers of the whole world because of those big poisony guys. Hmm. Anyway, that's enough speculation about lore, I think. More smashing rats with giant lightning powered sway handers. Okay. So up this way. More rats. And even more rats. Oh, here's a neat little area. I think that item over there is just a gold coin, so you really don't need to worry about that too much. So I'm just gonna show you how to get there. And if you do a well timed jump with a lighter armor set, you actually can get the gold coin, but we're not actually gonna end up selling it or anything, so we're just gonna leave. So you're gonna go ahead and drop down here, and there's no way back. Sadly enough. Let's and over here is a near fatal drop. So we're not gonna worry about that too much. Down here. And go down first. Because I'm pretty sure we're below the bonfire and we're gonna wanna go the wrong way first. Anyway. And over this way. That in case one that chest has in it, I'll show you in a bit. So there, and this chest over here contains the lightest of light armor sets, the Painting Guardian set. Now it's super light, and it actually has some really nice protection, so especially the leg pieces. I actually have a set using a fully advanced version of said leg pieces, and it's my PvP build, which means I can roll around super fast in it. And anyway, over here and through here and up here. So if you guys want to change out the gold hemmed black set for the painting guardian set, you'd probably actually be able to fast roll. So you could do that. In case you're wondering where this ladder leads, remember those rafters where you couldn't get anything in the first bit? I believe this is where they lead. Unfortunately, I was weirdly camera rotated into dying. So that was a really, really, really weird glitch thing. Anyway. We're well, well, back at the bonfire, and that gives us a pretty good starting point to get to the boss, finally. After
after almost 30 minutes, which is my normal video length, I was actually considering saving the boss of this area for later. In a, like, finish off the optional area's boss fights video or something. But, uh, I decided to just staple it on here, staple it on here, because it would make me feel better to put the boss fight in the in the video that's focusing on its area, and there's just no good stopping point to just cut the video in half. So anyway, let's just go ahead and run up here. And down this way. So this is one of the most interesting boss fights in the game. It starts out not... actually, wait. Let's go grab an item first, because I forgot about it. <laughs> anyway. So it is called the Red Sign Soapstone. You'll know that you'll know what it looks like when we get there. If you remember the white sign soapstone that lets you place a summon sign that allows you to be summoned into other players' worlds from the, by their discretion, of course, to help you with a boss, the red sign soapstone lets you be summoned into their worlds to duel them. So it's the honorable route for dark wraiths and such. And it and it almost always has honor dueling standards or stuff like that where like where it's like no healing and and uh, let your opponent buff and take care of enemies. Basically, no cheap tactics. And, uh, stuff like that. But, but if you guys want to try invading, this is the way to go if you don't want to invade someone who isn't prepared for you. So, if you feel really bad about, like, invading noobs who are totally geared up for PvE and not ready for PvP, you can go the Red Sign Soapstone route and whenever someone summons you, it's because they want to fight you. So, yeah, right up here. The Red Sign Soapstone. I already spent the whole way up talking about it. So, then on the way down, I'm just going to spend talking about the boss. So the boss fight of this area is really interesting because she starts out non-hostile, and you can actually talk to her and inter interact with her until you decide to attack her, as with most bosses. So, anyway, this boss is actually encourages you to leave the boss fight area and just head back to your world. So it's a pretty interesting boss, especially because she is half dragon, possibly the product of Seath the Scaleless and Guinevere, or possibly Seath the Scaleless somebody else, possibly Seath the Scaleless's experiments, or possibly just a half dragon born of some random dragon randomly somewhere. But anyway. Um, there, there's a lot of references to Priscilla uh, in the um, in like the Dark Souls community and stuff like that. But um, I'm gonna let you guys investigate that if you want to. I'm actually not feeling very explorative today, so I'm gonna head back to the main area from the Homeward Bone, and uh, it's time to get back to the boss fight. I sped up this bit because we've been here before as with most parts we've been here before. So just go ahead and run this way, past the Phalanax, unless you actually want to fight those guys and rack up a few hundred souls, a few thousand, a few ten thousands of souls. <laughs> anyway. So, I take every opportunity to slim me down as much time as I, can, as, as I could. So anyway, this way is full of pink hollow dudes. And one more of the big black knight guys really heavy shields, and in this time a great sword, meaning he attacks much faster, he attacks faster, and he has a but but he and he has less time to attack him. Other than that he's pretty much the same, meaning he's super easy with all our buffed up gear. If there is a guaranteed drop from him, he always no chance to drop anything else. Well actually he can drop his tower shield, maybe his great sword, but he always drops a large titaniite shard. So whenever you replay the boss, this guy responds and you fight him, you get a large thing at shard, and you're pretty much set to upgrade your boulder shield to plus 10 after a couple of tries fighting Priscilla. So she is actually one of the most interesting boss fights in the game because she has a mechanic that almost no other boss fight uses. She goes invisible once you fight her. So you have to find her, judging from her footsteps and her attacks, and uh, and uh, you have to judge where she is. Once you attack her a few times, she'll reveal herself, of course, and her health bar, which is actually really low. And and you can wail on her from there. GA does have a tail weapon, but it's not that good, and it's all completely dex-focused, so we're not going to worry about that. And she has a really nice scythe that inflicts bleed damage. You can craft it with her soul, and it causes bleed damage to the enemy as well as yourself. It's arguably almost as good as the Great Scythe. 
So if you guys want to try that out, it's all up to you. So, peaceful its inhabitants kind. So you're talking about the wheel skeletons then? Okay, anyway, behind her is the way back. You can just... So she wants us to go back home, through that ledge to the right. But, since I'm a walkthrough, I'm going to show you guys the boss fight. Spoiler alert, I die the first time. So, I actually include Movie Maker's little animation files. And she goes invisible. And zhoof, here's the actual boss fight. After dying a few times and making new video files and editing them together. As you can see, she's completely invisible. You have to find her and attack her a few times before she reveals herself. From there, she's actually really easy. Another neat little thing people like to do is pet her tail or something, but I don't know. That's just weird people on the internet. So anyway, now that we have our soul, we can craft the light fun scythe, but we're not actually going to do that because the great scythe, or the regular scythe, is pretty much the only thing you can craft it from, and we're keeping the great scythe. So here's the Xanthus set, which is King Jeremiah's armor. And it's not that good, but this is what we will, we will be wearing for the rest of the time. And no, I'm kidding. Anyway, this is way better in cutscenes anyway. So it's a medium-ish set. So I'll walk over here. Apparently your character is really reluctant to th throw themselves off a cliff. You know, I'm actually really surprised because you die a lot in this game anyway. And she's and your character's like, oh, this is really scary, really scary. Well, I guess some human instincts can never be shaken off like the inability to want to die. Anyway, you just throw yourself off, you fall for a while, and then no significant cutscene evidence is shown to show this, but you randomly appear back here with a homework bone. So I'm not going to bother fighting through here and wasting more of your time. I'm just going to go ahead and teleport back to the Dark Moon Tomb Bonfire. Which is really funny because it should teleport you to the Painted World of Remy's one, but just teleports you to the Inolanda one because it counts you as resting there last. That's an interesting little thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and consume this soul because we're not going to use it, as usual. Although it is one of the more interesting ones. And it's a little smug because that thing has way too high of a strength requirement. And we're going to use it to gain quite a few levels, of course. So now we're super high buff leveled, and we're ready to start some of the last levels of the game. That's all for today. Class is dismissed. Goodbye, everybody.